I remember getting one of your early surveys uh, and thinking, I need a cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, so talk, talk to us about, about the affluent consumer. 18% um, of African American households uh, from the research that we did have household income above $75,000. Uh, and most research confirms that digital behaviors and trends are amplified among affluent customers. Is this the case with African Americans as well? What are some of the unique dynamics of this particular sub-segment of the community online? Um, well, we refer to affluent uh, African Americans as triple A's, but as you were talking earlier, you mentioned royalty, and that's a term that we use for affluent ethnic consumers across the community, just for right now. And just to back up to give you this in the, in the proper context, when we looked at industry and the way the industry defines affluent, uh, it was somewhere around 50,000 or 75,000 household income is how the industry, this was several years ago, defined affluent. So we asked ourselves, where? In Iowa? Because, I mean, that is really, it's not, it's certainly not New York. Uh, so for the purposes of our research and for our business, and, you know, I'm, I'm not an industry drone. Like, I don't really follow trends. I never did. It's just not in my DNA. So that can be a good thing or bad thing if you're hired leadership that's great, if not, you know, I rock the boat and get fired. But, uh, so I said, so I, I was comfortable redefining affluence. Um, so our, for our purposes, it's a, a, a hundred thousand individual and a hundred and fifty household. Okay, so just to put that in proper context. Um, what we found out for, for online habits is uh, that in 2004, there were only 13.5% only of AAAs that used the internet to shop. Not to necessarily buy, but to shop. By 2008, that number had grown to 95.5%. No surprise there. All right, so that was in 2008. I'm sure it's you know, close, still close to that or more than that. Um, when we asked them which products categories they purchased online most, clothing was selected by respondents 55.4%. And a uh, close second product category was books at 45.5%. Was high up there. Interesting to note, I think it's important for the purposes of this Google sponsored panel, is that most common source of retail information is Google at 40% among the people they use. So this is just nuggets of insight, but you know, in, insight and data should only sort of aid in your approach to presenting opportunities to marketers. It is not the definitive sort of magic pill for where they're going to say, oh, let me write a check on that. There's, you know, uh, certain level of ignorance, there's a certain level of, you know, their frame of reference to carrying out, or even, even if they, they want to do it. Um, I found that target marketing and the company value of luxury brands, which may not apply to everybody here, um, target marketing is like like the green monster in the middle of the room. I mean, they just, they don't do target marketing. They're a German-based company. It's like, what are you talking about? I was joking, and I was saying, some of these European companies don't even like Americans. You know, they just want our money. So let alone target marketing, they just don't do that as you know a daily diet. Um, but you have to look at points of entry. So you have to use the data as a guide, and then you have to understand your audience. If any of you are salespeople out here, so you know understanding who you're talking to and who you're uh, trying to get to yes, and what the point of entry is for that particular company or brand. And so it, they may be motivated motivated by the company. They may be motivated by shrinking sales. So take the data, partner it with a little sociology, a little psychology, and then give them something that they could, uh, that will make them look good, that will help them keep their job. The average tenure of a chief marketing officer is 18 months, if that research is still true. Then they're not exactly out there blazing new trails and advocating for new things. They're just trying to status quo, keep their job. And then if you happen to be an African American employee that's in, in charge of you know, a budget or it's even more sensitivity. And so a lot of companies may think that you have an agenda to market to you know, your own, which of course you have an agenda to do a good job and to market to a, a group of consumers that are consuming at in large numbers. So there's you just have to sort of understand you know what you're working with and try and sell it through you know a couple of uh, uh, sort of smart ways by knowing your audience. And there's an acronym that I use when you're trying to sell an idea to a system, and it's called PAID. Just like it sounds, P-A-I-D. 
present ideas that are economically compelling, articulate that which is unknown, induce uncertainty, and be patient and persistent. Because the average time it takes for me to pitch and then get yes and close a deal is about two years. And you know, sometimes you do need a check, but it's more important to do things the right way than to do it rushed. Yeah. So